Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Crash Course in the Classics. For those who don't know me, my name is Nikki and here on YouTube I post videos about reading, writing, editing and all the things I love. And today is part of my fairly new series in which each month I take a look at a particular classic author, uh, give you a bit of their life history, talk about their works, major themes and how to approach these books if you're coming to this author for the first time. <coughs> Excuse me. So, today it's a slightly gloomy, grey, rainy day here in Adelaide, which seems a fairly appropriate time to talk about Dostoevsky. <laughs> uh, he's not really a sunny weather kind of guy, is he? So, without any further ado, we'll kick off and I'll just tell you a little bit about him. So, Fyodor Mikhailovich Dostoevsky is born in Moscow in 1821. His father is a retired military surgeon, and his mother's family are essentially merchants. This means he's actually a slightly lower class than many of the other famous Russian author, authors such as Tolstoy, um, who were really landed gentry. However, his uh, position in life does improve. In the uh, late 1820s, his father acquires uh, a noble rank. And in about 1831, he purchases a family estate so that they have a, a summer house to go to, which is kind of bringing them up the social scale somewhat. Dostoevsky is uh, educated at home initially. However, uh, he, in 1833, he goes off to school, um, first to a boarding school and then later to a military academy where he studies engineering. Uh, his parents die during the course of his studies, his mother in 1837 and his father two years later. And when he graduates, uh, he, he's not really into the military career his father intended for him. He's become quite a fan of literature, particularly Gothic romantic literature. So he ends up selling his sub-lieutenant commission um, to be a writer. He takes off um, initially his first published works are translations, not original stories. Um, he's uh, translating from French, uh, Balzac and the like. However, in 1846 he publishes Poor Folk, which is his first original work, and this is very quickly followed by The Double and White Knights. So these are shorter works, uh, short stories and novellas initially, but they're very well received. Um, in 1847, however, he becomes involved in a sort of socialist, revolutionary kind of set, um, probably prompted by his dislike of serfdom, and in 1849 he is arrested. Uh, he's sentenced to death, and actually a mock execution does take place. Um, they're all kind of trooped out to the field to face their deaths, um, only to find themselves reprieved at the last minute and Dostoevsky is then sentenced to four years in a prison camp in Siberia, followed by a period of enforced military service. And it's during this period that he first starts to um, suffer from epileptic fits. Uh, he finally returns to Russia after he's um, finished this punishment, a period of punishment, and he writes The House of the Dead based on his experiences in the prison. He gets married in 1857, however uh, his wife dies seven years later, and it's throughout the 1860s that he's writing a lot of his really major works, um, so think Crime and Punishment and the like. Um, he spends a lot of this period out of Russia, living in Western Europe, and it's possible that part of the reason for that is to escape his creditors, because he's a bit of a compulsive gambler and has racked up some debt. In 1867 he remarries, and this second wife really gets him in order. She sorts out his finances, um, gets him in line and they have a family together. He continues writing throughout the 1870s, however he finally dies in 1881, um, early 1881, when he suffers from a hemorrhage. So that's a little bit about his life. Um, a lot of his major works, um, and I will list some of them just to the side here for you, um, a lot of it draws on his experiences um, with his stint in Siberia, um, his experience of the prison and judiciary system. Um, and a lot of the themes relate to uh, things like philosophy and politics. And they also have a lot of psychological depth, which is interesting for this period. And really Dostoevsky's works are paving the way for the um, modern, uh, literary modernism, existentialism that's going to follow in the, as we sort of move into the beginning of the 20th century. Um, his works are also the basis for the idea of prison camp fiction and also dystopian fiction. Um, so people like George Orwell um, have a, a great debt to Dostoevsky's work coming before theirs. Some of his 
major themes involve things like suicide, uh, insanity, self-destruction, and um, murder, and a humiliation in a way. And the humiliation and self-destruction are often what lead to insanity, suicide, or murder. Um, these are not happy works, um, but they have a real character depth that you don't necessarily find in some other work of the period. Um, you, you get characters from people, say, like Dickens, and they're really beautifully drawn, interesting characters. We get to, to really know them and feel for them. But we don't get that really deep inner world um, for them that we do get with Dostoevsky's characters. So if you want to read Dostoevsky, where should you start? I would actually recommend um, picking up some of the shorter works. So uh, we have here um, Poor Folk, the first one he wrote. It's a really brilliant novel. Um, it's an epistolary novel, so a novel in letters, which is harkening back to a slightly older style of writing um, than was current in the 1840s. But um, it's a nice place to start. It's quite short. Um, and there's also uh, The Eternal Husband in that stint as well, if I can whoop, get these back in here. Um, you can also find lots of his short stories in collections. I've got this one here, White Knights and Other Stories. And there's a few different collections like that around. I would probably start with those, just to give you a bit of an um, insight into the style of writing, um, before moving on to probably Crime and Punishment first. Crime and Punishment's a very um, approachable novel. Particularly for the Russian school, because I will come back and we'll talk about Tol Tolstoy in, that in another week. But um, one of the hardest things actually with the Russian literature is the huge cast of characters they usually have, all of whom have, of course, the three name system and are called different things by different people depending on their relationship. So if you're not used to Russian fiction, uh, that can be quite tough at first. And Dostoevsky is probably a really nice intro in into the Russian school because his works tend to be slightly smaller in the sort of character, drama dramatis personae kind of um, aspect. So it gives you a chance to get your head around those names and keep keep up following the characters before you launch into like War and Peace by Tolstoy or something like that. So that's pretty a good place to start. If you're someone who enjoys seeing things before reading them, in the case of the classics, um, there are adaptations. Um, I actually found this quite difficult this week because most of the authors here, I've seen a lot of adaptations of their work, so straight away I can name several that I recommend. With um, Dostoevsky it's a bit harder and I think part of that is because it's very difficult to film Dostoevsky well because the novels are so introspective, um, it's hard to bring that out in the visual element in the film or TV. Uh, there is an opera of um, House of the Dead, uh, written by the Czech composer Janacek. Um, it's called uh, From the House of the Dead, um, in literal translation from the Czech. Uh, so if you're into opera, that might be one to check out. Um, there is a 1995 film of Notes from Underground, which I haven't seen yet, and I, in fact, hadn't heard of till I was just looking into it quickly for this uh, video. So that's one I'm going to check out. Um, I don't know what it'll be like, but we'll find out. There have been several versions of Crime and Punishment, of course. There are loads of film versions. Um, the only one from memory that I've seen was actually a two-part BBC adaptation um, done for TV in 2002, starring John Sim as Raskolnikov. And it was okay, it had its faults, um, but as I said, it is very hard to get Dostoevsky right on film. So, um, as versions go, I thought it, it's reasonable. So if you wanted to check something out, maybe that's one to look up. There have also been um, many film versions of Brothers Karamazov, uh, which was his last novel. That's a very good novel, it's one of the bigger ones, here it is, quite thick, as you can see. Um, I haven't seen any of these film versions. And looking through online, I have seen quite a few references saying that a 2009 12-part Russian TV adaptation um, is quite good and very faithful to the novel. Um, like I said, I haven't seen it. I'm not sure if it's available in subtitled versions or anything, but um, I'm certainly going to look up and see if it is around because it does sound fascinating. So that's a little bit on Dostoevsky for you. I hope you've had fun. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, do you like Dostoevsky? Which are your favourites of his works if you do? Um, and if you haven't read him, um, is there something putting you off? Or is it just that you haven't got around to it yet? Let me know in the comments and we'll have a little chat. If you've also got any um, authors you'd like me to do soon uh, in this series, do pop those below as well. Um, I have got an ongoing list I'm working through, but if there's someone you particularly want um, straight up, 
let me know and I will do them for you. I will close there but I look forward to seeing you all again next time for another Crash Course in the Classics. Bye for now everyone.